<laughs> right? No. You asked me about Howard. Here's a book that people should get. Actually, this is a $500 book. And this came from, okay, University of Kiel, but I'll show you. It's called The New Negro on Campus, all okay. right? You can get a paperback maybe for $45, but it goes back exactly 100 years. Just about 100 years when black students started standing up. Now, what I want you to understand, the HBCUs were not established to liberate black people. The HBCUs were established to provide superior education to the mulatto descendants of white people. Okay, and then the darker ones got in later, maybe as athletes or something like that. These things were not about everybody. They never have been. Okay, and black folks keep pretending that everything is open. Shoot, if your vagina were open to everybody, you'd have a disease. Things are closed. In fact, they're open anyway. Oh, shit. The, the, the New Negro on Campus talks about the black student movement of the 1920s, which is the origin of the student movements that you see in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. And what happened was that the, the HBCUs we're teaching people how to be Europeans, how to be white, mm -hmm. controlled by white people, and to be white-like and talk white-like and everything white. You had to go to chapel. And you had to sing like white people and act like white people, and that was being educated. And people rebelled against that exactly you know, within the last 9,600 years. But you have to understand something. Just because the students rebel doesn't mean that the system of cooning and being bowed down to white supremacy is gone. Yeah. You need to remember at Southern University, the black college president had the white police massacre students. They had students massacred at Jackson State. You had black college presidents that gave the names of the activist students to the draft board so they could be sent out to Vietnam and die. Uh, Howard University had student takeovers from 1967 to 19, and actually from 1967 to about 1975. Okay. So I know something about Howard. Now I can talk about those fake ass niggas. Howard University had a student rebellion in 1968 and 1969. What was the rebellions about? In particular, in 69 was at Howard University. Things like jazz, blues, and gospel could not be performed on campus. What? You are what I am. I'm a Pentecostal. Pentecostals could be denied admission to Howard because we are voodoo, stupid ass, ghetto, no good niggas who shouldn't even be admitted to a university because of how we worship in church, that we're scum. I just want you to know that. This is what Boule Coons did. So at Howard University, the great Donnie Hathaway, who dropped out of Howard University, Roberta Flack, who really goes back to Howard University, if they caught you performing gospel music, you'd be thrown out of school. If they caught you going to a Pentecostal church like the one I came up with, a little storefront, you'd be thrown out of school. They didn't want any of that vulgar, animalistic nigga stuff on their campus. If you were too dark, you may not be admitted to this school. Um, yeah. The whole I'm brown just paper to, bag it, test thing? It's, it's real. If you were too dark, you might not yeah. be admitted. You may not be welcome. And that's, see, well, for people listening, <clears throat> the reason why this is brought up is I always want to know Dr. Short's perspective because I know he went to Harvard. I've only, I'm not Harvard. Howard. Um, he went. You went to Howard, and I and I and I've only read. But I remember listening to an old Dr. John Henry Clark lecture, and Dr. John Henry Clark talking about how Howard University, Fisk University, was created for the exact same reason Dr. Short said earlier, was because you had slave owners, the ones that actually acknowledged their mulatto children. They didn't want right. them going down to Tuskegee with the darker skinned niggas in certain places. So the majority of the higher profile black colleges that we see right now were created for the very reason of having a buffer class. And one thing concerned that I had was because when you listen to the history of Howard, how they had Carter G. Woodson, the man who created Black History Week as a professor and got rid of him, how they wouldn't get professorships and would fuck with people like Dr. John Henry Clark, Dr. Ben, how you had Dr. Francis Cress Welsing living down there 
who wrote the they book on racism, Dr. and they never gave him that professorship. That's an issue. They got, they got rid of Du Bois. They got rid of Tony Brown. They got rid of Tony Morrison. Um, <laughs> they, they dogged E. Franklin Frazier. They dogged uh, Ernest Just. And you name them. They, they, just, they screw them, run them out. Um, Leo Hansberry, they dogged him. Anybody? William that, Leo Hansberry literally is the father of black history. There was all of what we when we talk about black history, we talk about William Leo Hansberry is somebody who created so much for us, and they fucked him over like that. Yes, sir. They waited until he died to allow there to be African studies at Howard. Only when he died. Okay, uh, this I'm just telling you that. Look, let me do some more Howard stories. I used to be in the I used to be in the choir, and uh, if the choir director get angry, stop singing like niggers. I don't want to hear any more black voices. I want to hear singers, and they would kick people out of the choir. They're too black. You're too black. You're too black. Get out of my choir. I don't want to hear any niggers singing. Literally. This is just, this is in the 80s. I'm not talking about yeah. the 50s. I'm talking about recently, relatively the recently. 80s. Yes, I'm talking about the 80s. I, I, I'm also saying to you, I finished Howard in 2006. I went again. And there are all kinds of things. For example, if I wanted someone to help me get my dissertation through, my dissertation advisor was white, then my thing got through. If I had a black person, it may not be good enough mm. with other black people. Just trying to tell you this. <laughs> Gatekeeping um, like a motherfucker. You 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 weren't good enough. For example, I'll tell you, my mother worked for Howard. My mother's lighter than I am. You could, in the administration building, people that were perhaps, if they were any darker than me, they wouldn't work on the higher floors unless they were really, really top level. So the support staff in certain offices, the people almost looked like they were white that were black. Just saying to you, and uh, so it's and, no coincidence you have all these white people popping up posing as black at these base BCUs. Well, there was a woman pretending to be black when I was at Howard. Her name was uh, Rosangela from Brazil, and they let her in the PhD program. She wasn't qualified. She stole my research and tried to use that to get a doctorate. They kicked her ass out, but because she had a drop of black blood, even though she identifies white in Brazil, she got shit over <laughs> uh, over all of us and that's the part right there that because you were Howard and you knew uh you now you're nowhere but you're around the same time as Kamala Harris around that around at the exact same time as Kamala Harris and so people that I want I want to set this up before I before you go in people say okay Kamala Harris went to an HBCU she has sure. so Kamala Harris she, because she went to an HBCU she has black culture. She knows about the black uh, struggle because she went to Howard University. Talk to these people since you were there at that time that Kamala Harris was there. What We, we talk a lot about Howard anyway. What, what do you have to say about these black people who think just because a person like her who spent high school in Canada, because she went to Howard, she has black culture? What do you got to say to that? Well, Howard University's medical school, dental school, law school, pharmacy school and some of the other schools up until uh, relatively recent um, had a considerable number of white students and sometimes whites could be the majority in some of the professional schools or uh, there'd be a large number of them. Aside from that, Howard University is the most international school in the country. I repeat, Howard University is more international than Harvard or Yale or Princeton or American University or Georgetown University, the University of Virginia, or University of Michigan at Ann Arbor, or the University of California at Los Angeles. Um, you name the elite school, Brown, Dartmouth, Howard is the most international school in the country. Howard University, in effect, is the national university for the United States to reach out to the non-white world. Mm -hmm. There are lots of international students that go to Howard and having been in, in African studies for 10 years, 
I can say to you that 99% of the international students that I met at Howard didn't give two fucks about black Americans. Man. Didn't bother. They didn't learn. They didn't have to. They tended to stick to themselves. I will give you a quick story. When I was on the board of trustees at Howard, went to the international students uh, fest, I mean, international uh, campus pals, whatever, and the students attacked me. The Caribbeans attacked me for wearing the shirt to try to reach out to them. Yeah, they assaulted me in front of people. No one did anything about it. That's how much they hated black Americans. This is in 1999. Mr. Knight, that's the year I graduated high school. Like, for real? Like, I'm, now. I, I'm thinking right now, Howard University has, and sorry, you're talking about my lips. My lips are peeling because they're dry. Okay. This, so people just have to deal with it. It's not spit, okay. it's skin. The weather's changing here. When the weather changes, my lips crack up. Okay, can't help you. All right, and folk have a problem with that. You know, stop watching. Just listen. <laughs> Hear that in chat uh, room. Go ahead. Let me just say this: uh, that Howard University has a Trinidadian president now who hates black people's guts. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Trinidadian. Yeah, Trinidadian president who hates black people's guts, and he's super pro LGBTQ. Let me just say this to you. Back in January 2018, the Black American students were protesting how much he hated their guts. It's rumored that he fired a lot of the African American faculty and staff and replaced them with whites and foreigners and, and purged the Black Americans out of Howard. And the students were, were chanting, Frederick hates Black Americans' guts in Cranton Auditorium. Frederick got angry, called in the Howard University police to beat them in the middle of uh, Founders Day. Wait, when was this? And January, I'm answering if you're listening, January 2018. That wasn't 10 years ago, two years ago. And the dean of the chapel, Dr. Bernard Richardson, intervened and prevented because they hold chapel in Cranton. And so that's like his church. And he refused to let the police beat the students. So you have a foreign, non-ADOS, non-FBA, coon-ass foreigner who calls out the police to beat the shit out of Black American students whose tuitions pay his fucking salary. This same uh, president has sold off the Divinity School, sold off the television station. He's sold Howard to everybody. He's the greatest enemy Howard has had since white folks wanted to burn Howard University in the 1919 riot. Quote me. They sold off Beltsville, our research property. I heard everything. about the Howard TV channel. I heard it was pretty dope, too. He sold that off? Yeah, it was underutilized. They had 10 channels, and but the Coons, they were more interested in stealing than developing. That's how it is. This is what the Boule does. They get stuff and they squander it. They mismanage it, you know, steal the equipment, <laughs> steal from the students, lie. And of course, that's all we got. So you can't complain short. Stop talking about us. Where else will people go if we don't steal all the equipment from a TV station? I mean, you almost hear niggas say this kind of stuff to you. I'm just saying to you. So this if this Caribbean dude, they, they fired and run off a lot of the good black faculty. He hates black Americans' guts. And this is what's going on now. Damn. And, and so, and before you had a coon named Swigert, and Swigert was bisexual, and the reason he got kicked out was that he basically was trying to fuck his chauffeur, and the chauffeur wouldn't have sex with him. And he uh, uh, harassed this dude so bad until the guy was going to commit suicide, and ultimately the board had to get rid of Swigert. You had these degenerate, he was an Omega Psi Phi uh, queer uh, swagger. This is the kind of stuff you have. Uh, swagger and these people are all Zionists. They're not for black folks. Howard University has a black studies department that only offers undergraduate degrees. It's been around 40 years. Why can't they have a PhD in black people? Because they don't want people to develop that. Once you begin to understand... Howard University and all the other HBCUs are places to create a managerial class that keep the rest of black people down. 